Thank you for attending the Neff Martial Arts Livingston E-Score Open, a 100% true score uh, tournament. We're going to go ahead and just uh, review some of the uh, USAT Taekwondo sparring rules so everybody can be aware of how the tournament will be run. These slides are directly out of the USAT referee development program that's uh, given uh, when you do a referee seminar to be certified. First, it's important to note that with the Dato True Score system, um, the entire trunk protector is a legal attacking area, but your, will, will, your system will only score points if you hit the colored area. So the white up above, uh, high up near the collarbone, isn't going to score a point, and the little tab um, just above the groin won't uh, score a point. And uh, a head kick is anything above the collarbone. And again, it has to be contacted with the foot. Okay, accuracy and power. First of all, we're using electronic chest protectors. So the accuracy and power is electronically judged. There will be no contesting a point to the body. Um, the head techniques, basically if it touches, it scores. So there is the possibility that a kick to the head or face may not trigger the electronic headgear, though we are using electronic headgear. Now, if you think the foot made contact, um, go ahead as a coach and put your hand up, and the center will go ahead and stop the match, check the corner judges, and if they see it touch, then you will get the points. And it's a simple yes or no question. Did it touch or did it not touch? It's not a matter of how hard it touches. Now, the corner judges will only be scoring punches and spins. So uh, it's going to be much easier for them to maintain and, and pay attention to spins and punches. If you see a spin that doesn't get scored, again, you can put your hand up and ask the uh, center referee to check with the corner judges. Rewarding one point for a kick to the body, one point uh, for a punch to the body, two points for a turning kick to the body, uh, three points for an attack to the head, and four points with a turning kick to the head for head kick divisions. Now a referee may uh, penalize and remove points for uh, any point that was uh, a result of a prohibited act. If somebody holds and while they're holding or because of holding they score a head kick, the referee can stop, penalize, and remove those points. One of the most common things you'll see with the electronics is after the referee says Kaleo or stops the match, uh, one person might kick the other and score a point. Um, the person that kicked would be penalized and then the point would be removed. Um, and that's one of the byproducts of the electronics is uh, the corner judges tend not to pull the triggers in the old style after the match is broken, but the electronics, if they don't stop the time fast enough, might score that point. I'm going to go ahead and list um, a lot of things that you could draw a penalty for. Uh, if you tip both feet cross the boundary line, it's a half point deduction. Avoiding or delaying the match. That includes just stopping fighting while you're uh, in a match. That could be called delay a match. Turning your back could also be delaying a match. Falling down uh, too often without the intention to stand your feet. Grabbing, holding, or pushing. Kicking below the waist. Butting or attacking with the knee. Uh, any hands to head. And how the hands to head rule works is an accidental contact to the face with a fist um, would be a half point deduction and intentionally hitting somebody to the head with your fist would be a full point deduction and if it's aggressive enough or flagrant enough it could even disqualify you from the match and also uttering undesirable marks and if you lift your knee to avoid attack or block kicks with your leg that will draw a half point deduction major penalties full point deductions include Attacking after Kalio, or after the referee tries to stop the match. Attacking somebody that's fallen. Throwing somebody down by grabbing or hooking. If the leg gets hooked up on somebody's shoulder, and even if they walk forward, uh, knocking that person down, that could get you a gom jam. Uh, intentionally punching the face, like I mentioned. Intentionally attacking below the waist. In, in other words, I guess that would be trying to kick somebody in the legs just to inhibit their ability to fight. Uh, if a coach interrupts the progress of the match, or a contestant, a contestant can't turn around and talk to his coach and tell him to uh, 
maybe protest a point or something that could get them a, a gamja. Uh, violent or extreme marks, intentionally avoiding the match, like running out of the ring when the clock is uh, ticking down is, is one. Um, and messing with the scoring system, like trying to modify your socks. Uh, this one's important. Um, if you have a total of four full deduction points, or that would be eight half point deductions, um, basically you will lose the match. Also, obviously, if you just don't obey the referee. If you make it through sudden death overtime, without scoring a point and it's still tied, um, you have, uh, the referee will figure out the superiority and choose a winner. Um, the superiority is determined uh, by, in this order, technical dominance, an opponent through an aggressive, basically how aggressive the opponents are, who uh, uses the greater number of techniques, in other words, who kicks more, and uh, it looks like the, you know, how advanced the techniques are, both in difficulty and complexity, and uh, who displays the best competition manner, so how good they look out there. Uh, the referee would then get the opinion of the corners and then make a final uh, superiority ruling. What is a knockdown? Knockdown basically means uh, an opponent is hit with a legal technique that scores a point. Uh, well, actually, a knockdown is just getting hit with a legal technique, and um, they're unable to respond or continue the match. Um, also, the referee could consider a knockdown if uh, the interest of safety, if they get hit and um, they just can't continue. When there is a knockdown, the referee will stop the action, uh, keep the attacker away, um, check the uh, doctor, or check the condition of the player, call the doctor if necessary, and they'll go ahead and do an eight count. Um, the eight count will come in if it was a, uh, a point scoring technique. If they didn't score a point with the technique and they're knocked down, then they get a uh, KC, a one minute um, timeout to recover. And if they can continue, they're allowed to. When you're injured, uh, the referee will call a KC, injury timeout. They'll stop it and you've got uh, one full minute. You can call the doctor and they can figure out within that minute if you are able to continue. Um, if you're able to continue, then the referee can go ahead and stop the match um, and, and determine if you just if the doctor needs to perhaps uh, put a band-aid on or do anything final to have you ready for the match and then you can continue with the match. But you have to make the determination if you're going to continue to fight within that one minute time period. If you have an injury timeout and you cannot continue, um, and if the injury was caused by a legal uh, action, the injured player loses. If the injury was caused by an illegal action, but it was only a half point or a minor penalty, then the injured player loses. If the injury was because of a, a major penalty or a one point deduction, then the player causing the injury loses. And what I was touching on before was um, if the player clearly indicates intention to proceed but the treatment is required and the doctor is unavailable or a bit of additional treatment is necessary, the referee can at that point choose to suspend the one minute time limit, let the doctor finish up, and then continue. But again, you have to be verified that you can or cannot fight within that one minute or uh, there will have to be a, some sort of call in the match. The junior head safety rules. Um, any technique when there's no head contact that touches the head uh, will have a half point deduction. Now if the technique causes injury or if the referee thinks it's excessive and it's the referee's job to determine that because we need to be safe in these matches, then you will get a full point deduction. And if, if it's excessive enough, um, it could even be disqualified if uh, the contestant uh, cannot continue or is injured. Now, when there is head contact under junior safety rules, um, any non-injuring contact uh, do uh, score valid points. If uh, the kick is too excessive, again, 
um, either by injury or if the referee thinks it's excessive, then uh, they will receive the appropriate penalty. Now, a competitor's inability to continue because they're crying or upset, that does not qualify as injured. It has to be assessed that the person is actually injured or the kick was excessive. Uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for coming to the Livingston eScore Open, and I hope this uh, rough overview of the rules um, help you understand the matches and look forward to your competition.